Hi everybody, it's definitely been a while, about three weeks or a month or so since I've made a video, so I wanted to come by and just make something really quickly. Um, I wanted to talk about Piaget's cognitive development stages, um, so hopefully this will be helpful for you and hopefully your studying is going well and hopefully those of you who have taken the exam for the first time have passed it. Um, or for the second or third or however many times. Hopefully you've all passed the exam by now. Um, just to note, I do tutoring as well. Um, so if you, and I really recommend that you at least try the exam once on your own to try to pass it without doing tutoring and things like that, unless you just absolutely need it. But um, if, you, if you failed the exam once and you feel like you need tutoring, then let me know. Uh, you can go to my website, day to day social work .com slash my site, and we can arrange something. So, I wanted to talk about Piaget's cognitive development stages. So, there are four stages, and I do have my notes. So, if you see my eyes wandering, I'm reading off of my notes just so I can make sure I don't leave anything out so I can give you thorough and correct information. So, um, there are four stages. The first stage is the sensory motor stage, and that stage is from birth to about age two. Um, and this is where um, sensory motor, when we look at that word, sensory motor. So this is where the child or the infant uses their senses and their motor skills to explore the world. So um, they manipulate objects uh, and there are some sub-stages to the first stage. So within the sensory motor, uh, sensory motor stage, there are um, six sub-stages. So this is a lot of information. So if you're taking notes, I would advise you to take down this information because who knows how it could pop up on the exam. But the first sub-stage is reflex and that's from zero to one month old. This is where the child understands the environment purely through inborn reflexes, such as sucking and looking. So you may notice a newborn child right after birth automatically has sucking, um, I guess, reflex, because this is the reflex up stage, um, or looking, that's pretty much all they can do. Um, they suck their thumbs while they're in the womb and that kind of thing. So um, the first substage of sensory motor is reflexes. And that's basically how the child interacts with the environment through inborn reflexes. Okay. Then the second substage is primary circular reactions. And this is from uh, one month to about four months old. Um, this is uh, coordinating sensations and new schemas. So for example, um, sucking a thumb by accident and then later intentionally repeating the action because he or she finds it pleasurable. So where we were first um, in the first substage, it was a reflex where we just sucked on our thumbs or sucked on a bottle or on a breast or something like that. It was because it was purely reflex. In the primary circular reaction substage, we do it because um, it's pleasurable for us, not because it's just innate. Okay, so then the third substage is the secondary circular reaction stage, and that's from four months until about eight months. This is where the child becomes more focused on the world and begins to intentionally repeat an action in order to trigger a response from the environment. So, like, when you think about a child that's four months to eight months old, the child may pull your hair because um, they may find your reaction funny. So, um, the child may look at you playing peekaboo and, like, they might find that funny because, you know, it's something that is repeated and they, it's, it's intentional. Okay. So... Again, um, a child pulling on your hair, um, a child holding your face and, and, you know, biting on it, that kind of thing. 
So then you have the fourth substage, which is the coordination of reactions. And this is from eight months to 12 months. This is when a child clearly starts to show intentional actions. They imitate the observed behavior of others. Um, they understand that ob they understand objects and they begin to relate certain objects with having a certain kind of category. So a child might have a toy where if you push the button, it lights up. So the child can cognitively understand that if you press this button, then this light will come on. Um, and it, like, I, like I said, it's also the stage where children start to imitate adults. So um, let's say you're drinking some water and uh, you start coughing because the water went down the wrong uh, pipe. So the child may start copying you as you're coughing because they look at you and they, they imitate your behavior. So then we go to uh, the fifth stage, which is the tertiary circular reaction stage. And that's from 12 months to 18 months. This is where children begin um, to do trial and error. Um, they may try out different sounds or actions uh, as a way of getting your attention, the caregiver's attention. So, um, you know, a child knows that if they mess with something on the table that they're not supposed to, they know that they're going to get your reaction. So they may, um, let's see, they and they'll look at you while they're doing it. I mean, again, this is from 12 12 months to 18 months. When you think about a child that's a year to a year and a half, they're exploring things, they may be walking. So, you know, they, they like to touch things and play with things. And so they want to do things to get a reaction out of you. So it's trial and error. So they want to see how far they can push you before they, you know, get in trouble or get chastised or something like that. And then the sixth substage is the early representational thought, which is 18 months to 24 months. So this is a year and a half to two months. I meant to two years, sorry. Um, this is where children begin to develop symbols to represent an object in the world. Um, they begin to move towards understanding the world through mental operations rather than purely through actions. So again, this is... Uh, a year and a half to two years. This is where children be all of it begins to come together for them, um, where they're not just acting, but they're starting to be able to cognitively understand things. So they may have a little bike or something, and they know that if they get on it and they push their feet, that there is going to be a force and they're going to move forward. So, I mean, they might not understand it you know that detail but they understand okay if I push this pedal down with my foot I'm gonna I'm gonna accelerate okay so that those were the six uh, sub stages of the sensory motor uh, stage um, if you have questions let me know in the comment box but so the second stage is the pre-operational stage and that is from age two to age seven this is where children learn through pretend play. They develop their language. They're very egocentric. Egocentric is probably a word that you've heard of as a social work student in grad school or undergrad. Egocentrism is when you think everything is about you. And, and a way to remember that word is ego. And if you break the word down, egocentric, that means, you know, people who have an ego, they're all about self. And then um, centric, think center. So it's like you're self-centered. Um, and we all know that children uh, age two to seven, more so on the lower end of that age range than the higher end, are very egocentric. They fall out in the middle of the floor in the grocery store. They can't have what they want. They stand in front of the TV and they don't care that you can't see the TV. They feel like they're made of glass and that you can see through them. But um, they're very egocentric. Everything is mine, 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 that kind of thing. Um, the things that they struggle with uh, in the pre-operational stage, again, ages two to seven, is logic, the point of view of other people, hence egocentric, uh, e egocentric attitudes, um, and then understanding the idea of constancy. And constancy is, um, we talk about 
conservation is what you probably would hear it as and that they give you the example of where um, let's say that a parent takes a quart of apple juice and they pour half into a 12 inch high glass and half into a 12 inch wide glass and then ask the child which one she prefers and so the child will probably pick the glass that is 12 inches high over the glass that is 12 inches wide because it appears that there's more liquid or volume in the 12 inch high glass but we know that it's the same amount it's just conservation and you know how it looks as opposed to what it really is um, then we go to the third stage which is the concrete operational stage and this is from age 7 to age 11 um, this is where kids begin to think more logically and their thinking can be very rigid so um, you know they may especially on the lower end of the age range age 7 they may put their hand on the stove even though it's hot and you know um, it, it takes a while for them to understand that you know put your hand on this hot stove you're gonna get burned well it probably won't take that long for them to understand if they actually get burned <laughs> but um you know if you put your hand in a dog's mouth it's probably gonna bite you that kind of thing so they can think more logically but very rigid um, they also struggle with abstract and hypothetical concepts they're less egocentric during the concrete operational stage and they begin to think about how other people may think and feel um, they also begin to realize that their thoughts are unique to them and not everyone else necessarily shares the same views or thoughts that they do um, and then they also can understand the concept of reversibility which means like um, they can say that their grandmother is their mom's mother that kind of thing or their um, grandfather is their dad's dad that kind of thing so they can understand reverse relationships so then we get down to the formal operational stage and this is from adolescence to adulthood um, of course we have an increase in logic um, they're able to use deductive reasoning and understand abstract ideas um, they become more capable of seeing uh, multiple potential solutions to a problem and think more specifically about the world around them and more scientifically about the world around them or around us because it's adolescence to adulthood. And so hopefully uh, this quick review is helpful to you. Um, I have reviewed all of this content in this video in a tutoring session before to be more detailed um, but for the time for the sake of time I don't want to get into it because I don't want to make a long video because I know uh, people don't really want to watch a long video so um, hopefully that's helpful for you hopefully your studying is going well if you have any questions leave them in the comment box uh, if you have any suggestions on uh, how I can improve let me know um, I don't know how to do all the video editing and things like that but um, hopefully these videos aren't that long I'm trying to make them shorter alright so if you have any questions leave them in the comment box please like and subscribe share this uh, channel with your colleagues and friends um, and make sure to check out my website day to day social work dot wix dot com slash my site alright happy studying